One of the simplest ways that you can prevent, that is that you can keep yourself from rushing and jumping in and speaking too fast, is to do what I'm about to share with you right now. My name is Michael Williams. Thank you so much for watching this video. It's a part of just an ongoing series that's tied to an absolutely free program that I want you to get a hold of, and that's called The Seven Steps to Quickly Achieve smooth, calm, and confident speech. So in and around this video, you're going to find some links where you can register absolutely free for this program and go deeper in each of the subjects that we'll be talking about in the videos that you're watching right now. This program is absolutely free. I've also included a bonus program that I won't tell you about. It's a surprise. Once you get into the program, you'll see it. What you're going to get, video, and you're going to get audio in its own mobile application, SoundWise application. So when you click, you'll register, you'll get access to the online course, the video, then you'll get a link where you can go register for the audio, for the mobile audio version. You want to get access, you want to get into that. So let's talk about then what you can do to prevent yourself from just rushing in. So, so many times when people are speaking, uh, and you have something that you want to say, you feel like you have to hurry up and say it right now. Or someone is talking, you're in a conversation, and you want to jump in. I've seen people, work with people who, before you can even finish, they're jumping in. Or as soon as someone finishes, you're jumping in. And so your mind is racing. I mean, some of your, your minds are so very sharp and fast that you want to jump in and say something right now. You've got to say it right now, and you have to get it out as quickly as you possibly can, right? So that is your default way of speaking and your default way of thinking. And whenever you use your default, whenever you fall back to your default, your brain says, oh, this is the way we always speak. This is the way we always think. And when we speak this way, when we think this way, we struggle with our speech, right? So we have to change that. But an additional reason to use the technique I'm about to share with you is that it's good manners. It's good conversational manners. It makes you a great conversationalist. So here it is. Just to pause at least one second, at least one second, before you speak. Pause at least one second before you speak. So let's jump into this just a little bit, but remember I go deeper in the Seven Steps program, which you can have access to for free. So what do we mean when we say pause for one second before you speak? Well, let's talk about two different scenarios. One is where someone is speaking, they're talking to you, and you have something that you want to say. You want to give that person time to finish. Now, know that there are situations where you have to learn how to jump in, right? People are not going to give you a chance. I've experienced those, in it, and I struggled at first to jump in because you have people who are using up all the airtime, and it's really, really hard to get in. So I developed some strategies to get into conversations when there was no opening. And we'll talk about that, perhaps not in this video, but in another. Um, so but let's just say that you're talking, and someone's talking, and you want to get in, right? You let them finish their thought, and then you pause, right? Especially if they ask you a question, you pause. If they're saying, you just pause. And then you begin to speak. Another scenario is when you have something to say, right? You have something to say. Don't just blurt it out and say it. Pause first. Pause first and then say what you want to say. Don't say it as soon as it comes to your mind. Now, why not? Well, here's the reason. When you pause, you're taking control over your speech. Remember in the first video, I hope that you watched the first video, we talked about the law of control. And that law says that when you feel like you have control or when you have control, you feel better about yourself, right? You feel better about your life, about your possibilities. And you also feel more confident. And when you feel more confident, you will often speak better. You will often speak better. So the law of control says that you want to gain control over as many areas of your life so that you feel better about your life. You feel better, in this case, about your speech, about your possibilities, about your ability to handle different speaking situations. And you feel more confident. And when you feel more confident, you project that, you speak better, you perform better. Okay? You're more persuasive, you're more influential when you feel confident. So 
when you pause, uh, people have called this the power of the pause. When you pause, especially before you speak, you give yourself a chance to calm down and relax a little. You don't just jump right in, right? And this is even when you have you just pause for a second, and then you say what you want to say. When someone else is speaking, they ask you a question, you pause. This lets the person know that you're listening to them, that you're hearing them, that you're not just thinking and chomping at the bit to jump in, that you're actually paying attention. This lets the person know that you're thoughtful. This is a characteristic of leaders, that you're thoughtful. So you're not just spinning off the first thing that comes to your mind. You're actually thinking a little bit. And sometimes you might pause for more than a second. It might be two seconds, three seconds, five seconds. It's okay to pause. So one of the challenges with this is if you have the belief that you can't pause and that you shouldn't pause and that you have to jump in because everyone else is doing that or that if you pause you won't be able to speak or that people will think you don't know what you're talking about or that you're not as sharp as other people if you're pausing. If you have those beliefs, the problem will be is that you won't see the value in pausing, you won't pause and you'll continue with your default way of speaking. Does that make sense? Something has to change, something has to change. And many of my clients have told me that by teaching themselves just to pause, they've become more relaxed. They've slowed things down. They've taken greater control over their speech and over their speaking situations. It's all about your feeling like you're in control of your speech. You're in control of your speaking situations. Other people are not causing you and influencing you to speak too fast, to speak faster than what you want, to speak sooner than what you want. Because when you do that, you're not accomplishing your goal anyway. Right? You're not saying what you want to say because you're stumbling, you're getting stuck, getting anxious, and so forth. When you have control, what you're going to find is that you're able to speak better. Here's something that people have told me over the years. Just out of the blue, I don't ask them or anything. So people say, you know what? When I'm around you or when I listen to you speak, I feel calmer. I feel more relaxed. Uh, what, what begins to happen is that they, their speech often begins to slow down. So, so let's just say they're a frantic person. Around, but when they're around me, they begin to slow their speech down. This doesn't happen to everyone, right? But for many people, it does. So here's something that you want to remember. You want to create your own aura, your own aura, how you handle yourself, how you speak. You're relaxed, you're calm, you take your time. You speak at your own rate, at your own pace. You pause when you want to pause. And what will begin to happen is some people will see that, they'll like it, and they'll get drawn into your aura as opposed to you getting drawn into theirs, into a hurried, rushed aura where you feel like you have to rush in and speak. So remember, Pause at least one second before you speak. It's so very simple. Just pause. So you have a thought. Okay, sure. Uh, I just wanted to say blah, blah, blah. Or someone's speaking and they ask you a question. That's a great question, right? So when you do this, it will help you feel like and it will help you actually take greater control. It's a great conversationalist tool. Now, let me just, just quickly talk about what happens when you're in a very, very dynamic environment and people are speaking? I'm just going to give you a couple of quick tips. One of the things that I had to learn was how do I jump in when people are not giving you space? So here's just a few little tricks and tips that you can use to, to jump in. One of them I call is kind of mixing, mixing your way in. So think about um, if you're mixing music in, right? You're mixing the music and there's an overlap. So there's music playing and then it mixes in the new song. So sometimes what you have to do, because a person will not give you an opportunity, when you believe that they've shared their thought or sometimes they've repeated it and you said, okay, now is a good time for me to share my thought. One of the tips that you can use is just you can indicate that you have something to say. Sometimes you indicate it physically by raising your hand, by going something like this and going, yes. And, and then you indicate verbally. Right? Use your body and you use your voice and you, say, and you agree with them. You affirm what they're saying. So they're speaking and you're nodding and you're going, yes, yes, exactly, I know exactly what. So while this may seem a little rude, but it's what you have to do in that moment to get in because no one's giving you an opportunity, so you have to take it. But you do it in a way 
that you mix yourself into the conversation. So you, you visually, you physically indicate, hey, I'm, I have something to say. And then you verbally indicate by saying, yes, yes, absolutely. I know exactly what you're saying. And when they hear you speaking, sometimes they'll stop and they'll go, oh, and then and you'll say, yes, yes, exactly. And what I wanted to say was blah, blah. And then you're able to speak. Now, some people will be rude and they'll keep speaking. So then you do it again. Right. And then sometimes you just have to say, hey, I have something to say. Like I've done that. Hey, I got something to say. Right. Because they're just not giving you the opportunity. So you have to let them know, hey, you need to open this up some. Often, though, if you use that other little trick, you mix your way in, you indicate verbally and you agree audibly. Hey, yes, a- absolutely. I know exactly what you're saying. And you know what? You know what? You know what? And then, and then they'll finally begin to listen to you. OK, but if you sit back and wait for the opportunity, sometimes you don't get it. Sometimes you don't. Get it, and it'll be frustrating because you'll be quiet. So that's one little tip, one little trick that you can use. And it, it does work. You have to practice it. But in most professional situations, in many professional situations, I can't say most, but in many professional situations, you won't have to do that. You can literally allow the person to say what they want and pause before you speak. So again, we're going to go deeper. You're going to hear me talk about different aspects of this in the video. So go ahead and register seven steps to quickly achieve smooth, calm, confident speech. It's absolutely free. Check out the link. For those of you that want to accelerate your progress, you don't want to take years and years figuring this out on your own, you're going to want to uh, schedule or book a free consultation, free conversation with me. That way, you and I can look at where you are now, where you want to get, and how you and I can get there together. Okay, You want to do that because you're probably missing opportunities right now. No one wants to go through life feeling trapped in their own mind, can't say what you want to say, Uh, missing opportunities, financial opportunities, social opportunities, professional opportunities. No one wants to do that, and you don't have to do that. So the way to accelerate that process is to work with me one-on-one. All right, so if that's for you, if you're a professional or you're professionally minded, you've tried this on your own, and you're like, wait a minute, you know, I just keep getting results and then then regressing, getting results and regressing. It's going to keep being like that until you do something different and the something different is to work with me one-on-one because I can assess your situation, hold you accountable, help you stay consistent and personalize, give you personalized feedback that can save you years, years. Thank you so much. This is Michael Williams. Look forward to seeing you inside the program or working with you one-on-one.